Hi, this is Julie Harlan. Please visit my website at yourmathcal.com where I organize my videos by topic. A fraction that contains one or more fractions in either its numerator or denominator, denominator or both is called a complex fraction. Below are five examples of complex fractions. Um, complex fractions are not in simplified form and there are two common methods for simplifying a complex fraction. In the first method, both the numerator and denominator need to be written as single fractions and then you can multiply the numerator the re by the reciprocal of the denominator. In my example, the very first one is in that form, so method one works very well for that. For the rest of them, method two is actually easier for most people. You multiply the numerator and denominator of the complex fraction by the least common multiple of all the denominators of fractions in the numerator and denominator, and this eliminates the complex fraction in the first step. All right, we're going to simplify this complex fraction. So we notice there's more than one term in the numerator, so we want to determine the least common multiple of all the denominators, and we see there's three fractions. One fraction has a denominator of x, another one has a denominator of x plus 2, and this third one also has a denominator of x plus 2. So there are really only two different uh, denominators, x and the other one is x plus 2, so our least common multiple is the product, x times x plus 2. So I'm going to multiply both the numerator x times x plus 2 over 1, and the denominator by x times x plus 2 over 1. Now, you don't have to put over 1. So I need to do the distributive property here. So I'm going to take this 5 over x and multiply by the x times x plus 2. So I have 5 over x times x times x plus 2 over 1 minus, and then I have 3 over the x plus 2, and it also gets multiplied by x times x plus 2 over 1. Now the denominator, there's no distributive property. We simply have 4 over x plus 2 times x times x plus 2. So let's see what can be canceled. The x's here, all the denominators will cancel, right? That's the whole idea. So that x plus 2 cancels, this x plus 2 cancels, so what do I have left? Well, in the numerator I have this 5 times x plus 2 minus, and then I have just 3 times x, which is 3x. In the denominator I just have 4x. So if I simplify that numerator by doing the distributive property, I have 5x plus 10 minus 3x all over 4x, which is 2x plus 10 over 4x. Now you might notice there's a common factor of 2 in the numerator and denominator, so we want to factor out the 2 in the numerator. 2 times x plus 5 all over 4x, and I'm going to write that 4x as 2 times 2x. You don't have to, you can cancel without doing that, but it's easy to see what the final answer is going to be when I do it that way. So what I'm left with is in the numerator, x plus 5. Remember, that's a quantity, you can only cancel out with another x plus 5, so don't try to cancel out the x's here at the end. I have x plus 5 over 2x.